Media. From the fast action of the trading pit to the power brokers making the headlines, you'll hear it all on the Traders Network Show with your host, Michael Yorba. All right. Michael interviews the front page titans about the latest in trading tools and market trends in stocks, commodities, bonds, forex, and derivatives. The Traders Network helps you stay ahead of the curve and delivers tomorrow's trade today. Now, here's your host, Michael Yorba. Welcome to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Radio Studios. All right, I'm joined this morning with Jason Flom, uh, son of the legendary Wall Street Joe Flom, but also known uh, by New Yorker magazine as one of the most successful record men in the past 20 years. This gentleman has been around the block in the music industry, Capital Music, Virgin Records, Atlantic Records. He's a turnaround expert in this industry. We're going to get a lot of information about where the industry is, what this man has done in the industry to change it and where it's going to go. Jason, welcome to the show. Good morning, Michael. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for taking the time and being here. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's great to be here, you know, especially with my dad. You know, he's looking down from wherever he is, and uh, I'm sure he's smiling because, uh, you know, I always sort of consider myself the black sheep of the family, and now to be on the uh, Traders Network, uh, I'm sure he's getting a kick out of it. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. Coming from you, that's that's a real kudo for me. I appreciate that. Let me back up a little bit and let you embellish a little bit about your accomplishments in the industry, and then we'll walk through discovering talent, the turnarounds that you've accomplished, in the, in the business and, and where you think it's going to go. That sounds like a plan. Um, yeah, I mean, just to start off, I mean, I would, I've been in this business. I just celebrated my 35th anniversary. I know that makes me sound old, but July 31st was my, uh, July 31st was my 35th anniversary in the business. And at the, uh, on that day, I happened to have the number one record on iTunes, which was Jesse J. So it was sort of a nice moment. Um, but I started when I was 18 years old putting up posters uh, for Atlantic Records. So it was a great job. I thought it was the best job in the world. I was making $4 an hour and running around with a staple gun and double-sided tape and hanging up Led Zeppelin and ACDC posters, and I thought, this is this is as good as it gets. You know what I mean? Right. I do. So Wait, that, go, on. go on, please. I interrupt you. I don't want to hear this. So that was the beginning, and then you know, I, I, I realized I fell in love with the music business. You know, my dad had, had given me and my brother the advice. He said, you know, do whatever. He never encouraged us to be lawyers and follow his footsteps. So he gave us the, the best advice, which he said, do whatever you want to do. Try to be the best at it, but most importantly, make the world a better place. And I was like, I thought, well, I can follow that advice. And then, you know, I wanted to be a rock star, but I realized when I was around 18 years old that I was never going to make it. Uh, uh, that big. I heard the first Van Halen record and I said, forget it, I can't do that. So, uh, and then I fell in love with the business. And what I wanted to do was discover talent and help other people become rock stars. And uh, so I, I sort of found my way into the A&R department, which is, you know, stands for artist and repertoire. And I got to work under the legendary Ahmet Erdogan and Doug Morris, and I had some incredible mentors. And along the way, discovered, you know, some, some tremendously successful artists and artists I'm really proud to be associated with. Well, talk to us about some of these artists that you've discovered. I want to, I want to get the audience to hear the litany of... of, of well, of it's funny because it started with a band called Zebra, who was a, a band from New Orleans, uh, who had a, a, a pretty a decent hit, a gold record, but the second one was Twisted Sister. And Twisted Sister, you know, it's become a, 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 almost a piece of pop culture now. They have a movie out, they're, they're back together, they're touring and making money. But they were considered a joke in the music industry at the time, and everybody had passed on them. But I had learned from Doug that the most important thing is when someone actually pays for something. You know, you, it, music is so strange because it's not like other businesses. You can't, you can't see it or touch it or hold it. You just hear it, and it, it triggers an emotion. So it's, it's like we market magic. But the only, the, the, one of the little bits of science, Michael, that we have is when somebody... Like with, with Twisted Sister, when I first went to see them, there were 3,000 kids there on a Wednesday night in Poughkeepsie, and they were all screaming, Twisted Sister, at the top. It was actually Twisted F blank blank and Sister, right? And I, and I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is like, I was almost a borderline religious experience, seeing these kids with their fists in the air. And I just said, this is, I mean, it doesn't even matter what I think. These kids love this band. They're all wearing the shirts and stuff. So... 
that was sort of the first, you know, mega act that I worked with. And then, you know, from there it was Skid Row and White Lion, and I discovered Tori Amos and Stone Temple Pilots, and then, um, you know, Collective Soul, and it just went on and on, um, you know, through through running the A&R department at Atlantic, and at that time we had Hootie and the Blowfish and Jewel, just big, big acts. And, of course, back then it was fun because when somebody heard a record on the radio and they loved it, they'd buy it, right? There weren't options. Um, you know, taping was, was cumbersome. It wasn't like people were going to, to tape it. And then, anyway, Michael, so then that led to the, me founding uh, Lava Records in partnership with Atlantic. And Lava went on this crazy roll where we had Kid Rock and Matchbox 20 and the Corps and Trans-Siberian Orchestra and, uh, and a number of other successful acts. And I wound up selling that to Atlantic and becoming the chairman of Atlantic Records, which was sort of a dream because having been, you know, that 18-year-old kid putting up the posters, I was like, are, are you kidding me? Like, I mean, I, I'm the one who gets to decide if it's a snow day. It's funny, that was my first thought <laughs> when they gave me the job. I couldn't believe that I got to make those decisions. But, yeah, so it was, it was an amazing run at Atlantic. It was really, uh, it was just a great time, and I have, I have so many great memories. Let's go down that road, because to your credit, you've got, uh, you, you worked with Virgin, Capital, Atlantic. Talk to us about the, the changes you made in those major labels. Well, it's interesting. When I left Atlantic, um, and I went uh, uh, sort of immediately segue to becoming the chairman of Virgin Records, uh, the company was in real trouble. It had been uh, it had been really very dormant for the last uh, ten or twelve years. hadn't really broken any acts. The books were a mess. And I remember what I read in the in the great book Good to Great. You know that everything's about people, right? People, the five secrets of success: people, 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 and people. So, and, uh, and also in that book, they talk about how, um, I'm sure you've read it, um, many people have, they're, they're listening. Um, they talk about how, you know, the strategies to get the best people on the bus and then figure out where the bus is going. So I went and hired the best people I could find and people I knew from the industry, some people that, you know, I had relationships with. Um, and we turned the place around. You know, it was during that time that I signed Katy Perry. And, of course, that makes a huge difference, right? One giant star like that can really help. But we also broke 30 Seconds to Mars and Corinne Bailey Ray and K.T. Tunstall. And um, we had a lot of it. It's red jumpsuit apparatus. I signed the day after I got there. This band called Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, which might sound obscure, but they had a platinum record. And so we really started to turn around quickly. And we built a culture there, Michael. You know, it, we had... Uh, I mean, I, I did something, uh, we had a, a company-wide ping-pong tournament um, where I offered to play the winner, and then I w- if they beat me, I would do their job for an hour. So I wound up working in the mailroom for an hour because this kid, Jose, beat me. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, you know, we had, you know, I did some, I established something called Virgin University where I would bring a, um, you know, a speaker in once a month. We'd shut down all the phones, all the assistants, and everyone else would come into this big uh, conference room that we had, and I'd have a speaker come in, and it would be anyone from a United States senator to somebody in the music business, a booking agent, just someone who we could learn from and build culture that way. And we had a great time. You know, at that time, Virgin and Capital merged. The combined company was very, you know, we, we, we made it successful. We balanced the books, broke a lot of acts, which is the most important thing in this business. And, uh... And it was it was really a it was a lot of fun, and I'm very proud of what we accomplished. Your industry is highly fluid. You've got to be very adaptable to stay ahead of the curve and be able to deliver what nobody knows the the, the world wants yet. You've got to anticipate what the audience is going to buy next. How do you stay in front of all of that with and and, and keep the hits coming? Well, that, that's a great question, and it's, uh, it's almost an unanswerable question, right? Because, like, like I said, we, you know, we market magic. Right. Um, you know, David Geffen described to me once, you know, he said that the, his, his key to success in the music industry, and he's been successful in so many industries, um, is, is instincts. You know, it's the best way that I've heard many uh, of the smartest people I know describe it in the business. And, you know, when, when you hear something, uh, it it's uh, it's a very it's a feeling that you get, and for me, like when I first heard Lord, you know, someone uh, this woman named Natalia Romashevsky, who was a friend of mine, sent me a link. Um, she sent me an email. I, I get a dozen of these a day where people are sending me music. Right? Mm-hmm. It used to be cassettes, then it was CDs. Now it's emails with with links. 
and the uh, the subject line was hot s blank 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 and uh, and then it just said unsigned New Zealand female listen and uh, it had a link and I listened once and I went oh my god this is I called her up I said what in the world did I just hear this is incredible it was Royals and um, of course then I, I reached out to Lord directly on email and <clears throat> you know that started the ball rolling um, her real name's Ella. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it, there's, a, there's a strange sort of an instinct that I seem to have where I can hear something and, you know, sort of, you know, it's almost like alchemy or something. Or I, I, can, I can just sort of, and then I, and then I can, I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy the process of figuring out where it fits mm-hmm. and how to market it and, and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm lucky now, too, I might be getting slightly off topic here, but I'm lucky now that Lava has started a partnership with Universal, who's the number one label in the business, and, you know, who has, we have, again, back to people, I think we have the best people here, and, you know, every record, you know, needs to have a team, because it's, you know, when you think about it, it's so crowded out there in the world. There's so many messages that people get every day, mm-hmm. and how do you break through that? Exactly. It's, it's really, a, it's a crazy process. Why would somebody want to buy a piece of music they've never heard before, from an artist they've never heard of before, when they're getting bombarded with, you know, music, music's everywhere, and, you know, it's part of your life, even when you're not thinking about it, when you're in the restaurant, when you're in the thing, when you're in the car, it's, anywhere you go, you're, you know, so it really, t- it requires a special piece of music, a magical piece of music, and then a real a, a tremendous team effort. It's like pushing the snowball up the hill. Well, it's not just the product. It's not just the talent that you have. You've got to be able to to deliver it in a fashion that gets people's attention and makes them do something. You have a knack for that, and that's what I'm driving at. Yeah, well, I enjoy marketing. It's it's a part of the business that I've always enjoyed, and that's and I think that's helped me a lot because many of my contemporaries in A and R. They're more, you know, just they love to be in the studio, and they're sort of like almost like the, uh, uh, you know, the stereotypical what you would see in a movie, what an A and R guy looks like, um, or or acts like. Whereas I was always interested in the other part. I'm very friendly. I love to take people out. You know, I think that Kid Rock. I I believe that Kid Rock broke as a result of a golf game that I had with a guy from MTV, because. Um, and, and many of the listeners, I'm sure, are, are big golfers, and I'm sure many have had experiences where golf has played a role in closing an important deal. Um, and with Kid Rock, his, when he made his first record for me, which was actually his fourth record, nobody would wanted to get behind it. It, it was the press didn't like it, the, the radio didn't like it, the MTV didn't like it, nobody liked it. And I, I and I was convinced it was one of the greatest albums of all time. That's the intuition I'm driving at. You, so it seems to me that it's not something that's just learned. You've got to have a natural talent to be at the top of your game in in, in your industry. Well, that that's right. It's a, it's a strange thing. It's not something that can be learned or taught. And it's there's no test. You know, my understanding is that Clive Davis, one of the great legends of the music business used to give uh, a potential A&R people a test where he'd ask them to give them a CD of five songs that should have been hits that weren't. And then if he agreed with that analysis, then he'd hire the person. That's what I understand. Um, it's an interesting test, but it's all totally subjective, right? Yep. Nobody knows. Music is like, the music business is like baseball. Nobody bats 400. And so, you know, but then again, you know, when you can hit home runs with people on base, it's okay. You know, it more than makes up for the strikeouts because everybody's got them. There's no way around it. it, it you know, the, the music business has always been, you know, there's so many new, new records released every year. There's, I don't know, 20 million songs on iTunes or something like that. And many, many of them have sold one copy or less, which always puzzles me. You'd think that, you know, your relatives would buy it, right? <laughs> like, well, if you and I made a record right now on the banjo, somebody would buy it, I hope. But... <laughs> It's, so it's, you know, it's really, uh, it's sort of a miracle when it does happen and when it connects. But we're always surprised in this business. You know, some of the greatest successes were records that were either, you know, passed on by everyone. You know, the famous story of the Beatles being passed on, dropped by one label, picked up by another. You know, there's, nobody knows. It's, it's like the movie business, right? Jason, we've got to, we've got to take a break now, but uh, on the other side of this break, let's get into Lava Records, some of the charity work that you do, and what's going to happen in the music industry coming up, all right? 
Sounds good. All right, we'll be right back with Jason Flom, CEO, LavaRecords.com. And special thanks to 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their media and PR support. the North Texas Traffic Center in McKinney on the northbound side of 75 between Wilmeth Road and FM4, I'm sorry, 543 or Weston Road. The area there is closed by major accident. Traffic right now is completely stopped back from Highway 380. This is involving an 18-wheeler. It'll be there for quite a while. Also in Garland, the northbound side of 635 before Centerville. Accident there has the HOV and left lane blocked and that's causing a delay back from I-30 in Mesquite. I'm Sean Anantz with your KFXR Traffic. Pre-owned with approved credit. It's 2014 model closeout at Pat Logue Toyota McKinney. Drive new 2014 Camry LEs for just $149 a month. Buy leftover 2013 Camry LEs for $13.9 in the discount zone. Get it fast and fair at patlogtoyotaofmckinney.com. It's not your daddy's farm anymore. There's no doubt technology has changed the way we grow bigger crops, feed our livestock, and also access market information. With the new Yorba Market Center, today's farmers and ranchers are embracing new technology through smartphones, tablets, and the Internet to give their business an edge. The Yorba Market Center gives you real-time quote access, news, and weather at a low monthly rate to help you stay better informed. Visit us today for a free trial at yorbamedia.com or call 214-504-9470. The Garage is a business accelerator and investment fund looking for new ideas in technology, manufacturing, and consumer goods. Our 90-day intensive workshops, taught by entrepreneur mentors, are focused on one thing, helping you make money faster. Each week, you'll experience a class taught by successful entrepreneurs with the guidance of experienced mentors in your field. We get you to revenue faster and help you find investors when the time is right. To learn why we're different, go to workthegarage.com. That's workthegarage.com. Attention men and women, are you suffering from back pain, neck pain, or joint discomfort? Would you like to learn of a non-surgical solution? Call American MedFix at 972-591-6675. That number again, 972-591-6675 to receive free info on how you may qualify for natural creams that may provide you with the relief you are seeking. All products are 100% made in the USA. Call now, 972-591-6675 or visit AmericanMedFix.com. Call Big D Cats Catamarans for fun corporate events and private parties. Come celebrate with your special clients and build your team. Bring up to 85 of your clients and friends for dinner and dancing on the yacht just minutes away from your office at Pier 121 Marina on Lake Louisville. Come sailing, golfing, target shooting for a fun yet elegant evening and cruise. You have to see this beautiful 70-foot catamaran. Check out the website at BigDCats.com. And to book your event today, call 214-705-3772. Would you like access to an accredited investor audience that can take your business to the next level? We have the most diverse demographics in the DFW Metroplex. Men and women changing the pace in the new economy today. Get ahead of the competitive curve by advertising on our new drive time slot, 6 a.m. to 7.30. Contact us at 214-504-9470 for all your media needs. From the Mini Cooper Weather Center, today mostly sunny and pleasant. High of 85. Tonight, fair skies, low of 60. This report is brought to you by DART. DART's Orange Line now connects you to DFW Airport Terminal A. Taking a trip from Dallas to down under? Don't wonder if getting to your flight will be tight. The train is always on time. DART connects you to the world. Let's go. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Radio Station in Dallas and worldwide through yourmedia.com. All right, I'm joined by Jason Flom, the CEO of Lava Records, lavarecords.com. We're talking about some of the great accomplishments this man has had in Virgin, and Capital, and Atlantic, and, and his own label, Lava, and some of the great artists that he's studied, uh, that he's discovered and worked with and signed. So some, many of them are still selling huge amounts of albums. Now I want to drill into Lava Records, the music industry, where it's going, where it's going to morph into, and some of the you know some of the charity work that you do. So, w- which one of those topics would you like to start with, Jason? 
Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a good choice. Um, Thank you. Let's talk about the industry for a second. I think it's something that a lot of people are, are talking about, and it's, it's a fascinating time because it's been obviously totally disrupted over the past decade uh, or a little bit more. Uh, and I'm, I'm optimistic. I think that the, um, obviously there's a decline in physical and digital sales, uh, but at the same time, the, the, the uptick in, um, or the upward trend, I should say, in streaming and the subscriptions is profound. And I think, you know, the smartest people I talk to, uh, who are some of the smartest people there are, uh, and I share their view, feel like we're on a, on a good trend for, you know, a three-year, you know, a real bounce over the next three years where the business is going to become a, a very, very robust business. And, um, you know, I'm lucky, as I said, to be with the best company, Universal, and, uh, you know, not, not only in terms of market share, but in terms of management. And we are, uh, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to be at the forefront of those, uh, uh, of that, you know, if you want to call it a recovery, I mean, look, the business, the business is never going away. It's a great American business. You know, it's a great export um, because, you know, a big percentage of the, the music that's bought all over the world comes from America. Um, and I think, you know, our job as an industry is to continue to discover great artists and promote great music. Uh, it's an important part of people's lives. It's what at the top. You know, it's at the top of the hierarchy of needs. Let me interrupt for just a second. What's the driver here of this next leg up, this next boom in the music industry? Well, it's definitely streaming and, and, and the subscription, it, both both the streaming okay. and the subscription. Digital. Is a, is a sort of a part of streaming, right? That's where it's all going. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Spotify's numbers are up over 70% this year. So that's, you know, they're, they're already, you know, they're a huge uh, account. Uh, for for the business, you know, they're um, of course iTunes is still the biggest, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and they're great partners for us. But uh, and and then there's you know there's still a, a, there's still physical business. You know, people still buy a lot of records at Walmart and Best Buy and those places. But but the uh, uh, the you know the move to streaming is it, it's really a major major thing for us, and it's it's a wonderful. I mean, it's as much as it's caused so much disruption. You know, what a thing to be able to get any music that you want any time. I right. mean, that's, uh, that, I mean, can you imagine like going back uh, 20 years or something, and I've been in the business for a long time. Um, it's something that is, you know, we envisioned, but it sounded almost like a dream. And now it's just a matter of, you know, it, it's, all, it's all going to be worked out. I'm an optimist and I'm bullish on the music industry. So the the summation from me, because I work in this field too, but the summation for me is really the integration of streaming and digital syndication through social networks and new social networks that get invented by the people that are either in or around the industries. Is that what I'm, is that what you think that that, that has a part to play here? I think that's a, that's that's a good way to put it. You know, look, there's there's people inventing new things. There's some some genius kid in a in a garage right now, right? Yeah. Seems like the biggest business is starting garages, but uh, yeah, there's somebody coming up with another model, right? There's a, there's there's so many wonderful you know minds out there, and people are going to come up with new ways. There's always going to be new ways of consuming music and that we can't even anticipate. Just- uh, but music is always going to be a very important part of the fabric of people's lives. And they're going to consume it. It's going to happen. So it's going to be a fascinating uh, a ride over the next several years. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Now, we only have so much time in, in left in this interview. I want to get in, uh, and you can please, I want you to come back. We'll do a part two so we can delve into some of these topics deeper later. But for now, what's going on with Lava Records? Where, where do you, what's happening with your company? Where do you see this this moving and, and open that up for me. Well, I just want to say, I mean, we're very, very excited about Jessie J. Um, she has a song, Bang Bang, out right now, uh, which is, uh, it's really sort of a, a, I don't know what the word is for a, a duet that has three, um, but Try it's her it. and Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj, three of the greatest stars uh, all together, and uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful song. It's been number one on iTunes. It's, it's, it's exciting. We've got her new album coming out um, in October. And um, so we're very, I'm very excited about that. I have a new, new I have an artist called Black Veil Brides, who many of you listeners don't know, but your kids do. 
um, tremendously popular band with the uh, with the teenagers, and their new album comes out in late October. So very excited about that. And then um, you know just you know looking forward to signing, discovering, signing new new talent, and continuing to you know put records at the top of the charts. That's uh, that's what gets me out of bed every day. Well, you need to let me know when your artists are coming to town because I definitely want to see the talent that you bring to the world. I'll, I'll get you tickets. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm, wait, I'm not I'm sure I'm allowed to say that on the air, but yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe. I'll buy them. Now we're clear. I'll buy them. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Charity work. You do great things. Let's at least touch on that and we can build on it next time you come back. Well, thank you for saying that. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a huge part of my life. I, I referred to my dad's advice earlier. You know, he told me that the definition of success is to make the world a better place. And uh, one of the ways in which I've been very lucky to be in, involved is with an organization called the Innocence Project, who I'm going to put a plug in for right now. It's innocenceproject.org. And this is an organization that um, exonerates wrongfully convicted people who are serving sentences up to, you know, people from death row serving long sentences all over the country uh, for crimes that they did not commit. And with the DNA, we're able to prove without any doubt whether or not the, the person who was convicted con- committed the crime. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling to get somebody out who may have served two, three decades in prison for a crime they didn't commit. And in a third of the cases that we've exonerated the innocent guy, we've also been able to identify the guilty guy for the cops. So it becomes a public safety issue as well as a, you know, as a, as a you know, doing the right thing uh, and, and helping these people. And so many of them have come out and accomplished great things on the outside, uh, getting advanced degrees. It's a very amazing, it's a, it's a wonderful organization. I'm honored to be a, a founding board member there, and it's something that will be a part of my life for as long as I live because... The feeling that you get from being able to, to, you know, to help these people out of this incredibly terrible situation is, is, you know, it's indescribable. Yeah, you do great work. I want to invite you back onto the show. Let's do a part two, drill down into it next time, and and thank you so right. much for being my guest. Before we sign off, if you want to, I would I would tell people to follow me on Instagram. It's uh, I'm it's Jason Flom. and I promise you, I'll make you laugh because I post funny stuff. I try to post funny stuff every day. Um, or maybe a nice picture of a sunset. So it's Jason Flom on Instagram, and uh, I, I appreciate you having me on the show. I look forward to uh, speaking with you again. You got it. Anytime. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thank you. Jason Flom, CEO, LavaRecords.com. And special thanks to 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great content just for you.